Here is solution to question 5 of the test on creating rational function for given conditions. I hope by now you have learned a lot about writing equation of a rational function when conditions are given to us. Now this one is very different from all the four which you have done. Let's go through it. Create a rational function with vertical asymptotes at x equals to 1 and x equals to minus 3. A horizontal asymptote at y equals to 1.5 and no y-intercept. Right, And no y-intercept. So that's kind of a very typical thing for this particular example. Let's try to understand by a rough sketch what we are trying to write equation for. So we have here a rational function with vertical asymptotes at x equals to 1. So let's say this is x equals to 1 for us and at x equals to minus 3. So let's say this is x equals to minus 3. A horizontal asymptote at 1.5. So let's say that is 1.5. Right. So this is our y equals to 1.5 which I can write as 3 over 2. Right. 3 over 2 is 1.5 and here we have equation as x equals to 1 and this is x equals to minus 3. Correct. And with no y-intercept, that is kind of typical because normally if you want to draw a graph like this or something like this, you'll see it will cross y-axis somewhere or the other. Now, what does that mean? No y-intercept. No y-intercept and we don't have a vertical asymptote also which is y-axis, right? This is your y-axis. Now, that really means that this is x and this is y. That really means that on y-axis we have a hole, right? So wherever the function tries to cross, we can put a hole there. That will solve our problem. And that is the key to writing this equation, okay? So let's develop our equation. The first half is very similar to what you did in question number one. So we have function f of x, and we say vertical asymptote at x equals to one. That means x minus one is a factor and x equals to minus 3 that means x plus 3 is another factor in the denominator so we got uh, x minus 1 and x plus 3 in the denominator that gives me a degree of 2 in the denominator now we have horizontal asymptote at y equals to 1.5 so if there is a horizontal asymptote of some value then this value is the, actually the ratio of leading coefficients so 1.5 i can write 1.5 here and the coefficients are should be same so okay so 1.5 i can also write 3 over 2 so let me write 3 over 2 it's good good to write fractions 3 over 2 is 1.5 now that should be uh, with numerator degree of 2 right because denominator is x square so that will be x to the power of 2 now that gives me this part of the equation so now we know the degree of numerator and denominator is both 2 and therefore horizontal asymptote will be ratio of their leading coefficients. Now the next half is it has no y-intercept. Now no y-intercept, if I put 0 here, I'll get y-intercept at the origin itself. But when we have no y-intercept, it means there should be a factor in the denominator and in the numerator which should cancel out. Correct? So, so that is how our equation is going to develop. So now we can write finally our answer as it is 3x cubed over 2x minus 1 times x plus 3 times x, right? Times x. So that becomes the equation of our function. See now we have a hole at x equals to 0, correct? And degree of numerator and denominator is exactly the same, right? So that is how we develop these kinds of equations, right? There could be other answers, like you could have a function g of x, which could be, let me write 3. Let me write, this is necessary, 2x. These two are must, right? x minus 1 times x plus 3, right? And with that x, we do have a x here also, correct? Because this needs to cancel out to give you a whole. And then we need something which will give me x square, right? Because 
degree should be same. So I could write x square plus 1 for example. Do you see that? So that will also work for us. Now the degrees are same, right? So you have the vertical asymptotes at 1 and 3, horizontal asymptotes at 1.5 which is 3 over 2 and a hole at x equals to 0, right? Do you see that? So at x equals to 0, we get a hole. So that point is not in our domain and that is how we could do it, right? So these are different ways of writing this equation. I hope by doing all these five questions, you get some insight to developing a model or writing an equation for the given conditions on rational functions, okay? Thank you and all the best.